Good morning, ladies. So good to be with you this morning. I know you're listening online, and we have a few people here in the church that are uh, preparing all of this to go forward for you. I have a podium full of announcements, and I'd like to say that I memorized them, but I didn't. So bear with me right now as I make these announcements so you can continue to carry on with us for the Joshua Springs family as we're all online. First of all, you can find all of our teachings and all of our uh, different segments that we're going to be doing on Facebook and YouTube But Joshua Springs. Download on your smartphones the Joshua Springs app. And now there's also one that says Bulletin Plus. And that is going to tell you everything that's happening here. We will be live every day at 5 o'clock. They're calling it Live at 5. Okay, so now you know, live at five, and every day there's going to be somebody different on there encouraging you, talking with you as a friend. Um, You don't want to miss this. It's been quite fun to watch what's going on, and everyone is doing their own thing according to what God's called them to do. Every um, Friday, we're going to be doing live casting cares. And you, those of you know, we've done this uh, segment. Gerald and I have done it for years. Uh, we used to do it on CSN, and we do it back east on the radio programs back there. But now, we're going to do it live, and it's going to be Fridays at 5 o'clock. And you can text in your questions, and we'll do the best we can to answer you from God's Word. Because sometimes, you know, you're going to find this hard to believe this morning, but life gets messy. And you may have a mess going on in spite of everything else we're facing. So if that's the case, go ahead and text us. We will be live at 5 on Friday, and we will try to give you some common sense for a really crazy world. Pastor Bob and Pastor Gerald will be doing Prophecy Update Live, and that will be on 5 on Thursday, on Wednesdays. And then I have a phone number to give you if you have any questions of what I just told you. And that number is 760-365-0769. Or you can text your questions or your comments to 760-338-338. 2889. And now I have these beautiful people up here willing to worship the Lord with us. And so wherever you're at, just start singing out loud because no one's around. And you can just worship and praise God with us. And let's just get started.
Father, for this time to come and worship you and praise you and feel your presence, Lord, no matter where we are and what we're doing, Lord, we know you're here with us, Father. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank you for your word, and we thank you for Marilyn. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Now, see, don't you feel better already? I mean, when we worship the Lord, he inhabits the praises of his people. And ladies, last week we all had a study about a wonderful power couple. And this couple, their names were Ananias and Sapphira. And you remember last week when I told you that they were the ones that were investing and they were making money in real estate. Ananias, his name means the generous one. He's got money. And Sapphira means beautiful. And they're everything that everyone would want in their church. They are respected and they come in and people like want to be near them. And so here these people were found in the church. And we studied last week that, well, God knew what they sold the land for. And so Ananias came forward to Peter and lays the money at his feet and says, this is everything that we made off this property. And God spoke to Ananias and he said, He's lying. See, being filled with the Holy Spirit is God giving you many times just insight into what someone's saying to you. And we know that um, that's what happened. Peter looked over at him. He says, you're lying, not to me. You're not lying to man, but you're lying to God. And so what he said was, look here, God knows what you've done. And the man dropped dead. Well, beautiful Sapphira was out shopping and you know, having a good hair day. She was out with her girlfriends three hours. It says three hours passed. No one came and told her, which I find really odd that nobody would run to warn her. But you know, sometimes when you have more than others, you don't have as many friends as you think you do. And so Sapphira was being beautiful. And so she was out celebrating the money that they had saved. They'd hoarded some back. They gave only a very little portion to the church. And God was wanting to give us an example. And so what we have happening here is that the Lord gives Sapphira one more chance. She comes in. And so as she walks in, Peter says, I want to talk to you. And she's like, what's going on here? Because it happened in the public. It happened in, you know, Solomon's porch. And so what's happening here? And so what happens now, Sapphira is going to be met individually with her own conquest of her heart. That's what I love about Jesus is he doesn't judge my salvation on my husband or on my father's position. He judges me individually. And for many of you listening, it's good news. For me, it's good news that he looks at me individually and he loves Sapphira. All through the word of God, God empowers women. You want a savior that loves you individually and loves you just as much as he does a man and that you don't have to follow after a man to get the words of life. You can look into the word of God. That's our Jesus Christ. And so he gives her one more chance. And ladies, I talked about this last week. When God gives you one more chance, take it. When God gives you one more chance to repent, 
Take it. And Peter looks at Sapphira and he says, tell me, away from your husband now, because you don't know that what's happened to him. Away from your husband right now, what did you sell that land for? And she lies to God again. She may have been beautiful, but she wasn't bright. It's a difference. She wasn't a very smart woman to not come clean when the maker asked you to come clean. And so here we see Sapphira, and she's lying to God. And she says, we sold it for this much. And he goes, you see the feet of those people that are walking in right now? He says, be prepared because they're gonna be carrying you out just as your, your husband just died, now you will. And she dropped dead. Well, we studied about that and all of, all of the drama that had to have been happening in the early Christian church. Now we're gonna see that they arrest them. They, they're doing miracles. They're going out. People are bringing their loved ones in on couches and they're taking them in the streets and they're laying hands upon them. Now what we're gonna see is the elders of the church, the Sadducees, which believed in no resurrection, which didn't believe in life after death and nothing very spiritual whatsoever other than what they can see and touch. Now what we're gonna see is that they are going to be the ones criticizing what Peter and Paul and the apostles are doing. You know, shouldn't we be on the same side? The church doing what the apostles are doing, the church doing what um, the disciples are doing, the church helping promote the Lord Jesus Christ. But back then, it was so much man over man and they had the pompous attitude when they would wear their robes. And so here what we see is these people are gonna go ahead and go to Peter and Paul and they're gonna rise up and they're gonna take them. So then they get thrown in prison. They beat them. It said even the priests went out and grabbed them. The priests with their own hands and their fancy robes and all their attire being spiritual, they go out and they grab hold of Peter and Paul with their own hands and they drag them into court, drag them into jail, beat them, and the next morning was going to be their court date. Well, at night, the Bible says, an angel of the Lord came and rescued them. And we're going to be studying rescue we're going to be studying our hearts during this time of trial and uncertainty. God does wonderful things to rescue us. And so here we see that they beat them. And the angel said, go ahead and go out. The messenger said, and go preach. And last week I was praying about that. And the Lord just gave me those words. Just go preach and tell them the words of life. And so then they go out. And they're talking in the synagogues and they get ready for the court date and the guards go in to bring them out. And they looked at them and they said, where are they? They're gone. The guards stand in there, the gates are locked, everything's still there in the cell, but the people are gone. The rescue, the rescuer came and he told them to go teach in the synagogues, go right back where you came from and continue doing what you've been doing. And that's what we're going to be walking into now. And so we're going to watch the movie. So if I can get the lights dimmed, we'll watch and then we'll have our study. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, 
Thea disappeared, claiming to be somebody. And about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we look into your word this morning, God, I just ask you that you would come alongside of us, Lord. And Lord, many of us are watching online. Many of us are, are anticipating what you have to say to our hearts. And Lord, your, your word speaks. And your word speaks peace and it speaks truth. So we ask you this morning, Lord, that you would come, that you would speak amongst us and this evening also in your precious name. Amen. So that was our recap that we just looked at. So we're going to still be in Acts chapter 5. And so here we see that um, everything that we had talked about that had happened. And we're going to be picking up on verse 29. After these things happened, they put them back into prison again after they caught them in the synagogue. And so now they take them back over there to the Sanhedrins and to the high priest. And it says here, when Peter was there with the other apostles in verse 29, they answered and they said to them, we ought to obey God rather than men. For the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you murdered and hung him on a tree. The apostles bring it all back to Jesus. See, when we're going through problems in our lives and we're facing something like we're facing right now all across the world, let's bring it back to Jesus. We are only the ambassadors for Christ at this time. We are the mouthpiece that God gives that he wants the world to know he is still alive. How can he get man? How can he get women's attention? I know. Let's shut down the world. 
There's a call going out. There's a call going out. The Lord's voice is crying out to the world, shut down and look at me. If there's ever been a time that we need to be close to the Lord, it's right now. If there's ever been a time that we need to be seeking after the Lord Jesus Christ, it's now. There's a call going out and it's going everywhere around the world. How can I reach more people, the Lord said. How can I do more than I'm doing now? I'll shut down the world. Isn't that exciting? He's shutting down the world. The airwaves are going crazy. Sermons are going out. People's lives are getting changed. We're having church in parking lots with the windows rolled up. And the songs are saturating throughout the neighborhoods. Shut down the world and maybe then they'll listen to me i'm excited because i know who holds the future the apostles did not take any glory for what had happened they just put it back on jesus and it says here they went right to the source and he says the god of our fathers raised up jesus who you murdered and left hanging on a tree But God exalted him to his right hand to be the prince and the savior, to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. You always link the crucifixion with the resurrection. Never mention the crucifixion unless you mention the resurrection because that's what all of Christianity holds is life after death. I cannot imagine what it would be like to be the kind of person that doesn't believe my soul will go on forever. How sad to be a humanistic that, or an atheist that believes that all you will do when you die is lay in a grave and it's done and it's over and nothing. There's nothing else that goes on. All of Christianity hangs on this important point of the resurrection. Never mention the cross without the resurrection. That's our hope. Yes, Jesus was wonderful and he was the Messiah and he was the savior of the world, but without the resurrection, it's just another formula of religion. The resurrection is what it's all about. And so here we see Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. It says here, and he says, you all put him on a tree to hang to die. And it says here in verse 32, or 31, but God exalted him. God will have the last word. God knows what he's doing in our world. And he's at the right hand and the prince of the savior and he gave a repentance and forgiveness of all sins and we are his witnesses to these things. Verse 32, you're the witnesses to what God's doing. In the shutdown, let's give God glory. Let's be praying for the sick. Let's be praying that this invisible enemy, as as, uh, Trump says, President Trump, he calls it the invisible enemy. Let's pray it goes away in the name of Jesus. But I'm gonna tell you something else. I've had an invisible enemy in my life way before the coronavirus. Any good thing you want to do Anything the Lord wants to do with you, you have an invisible enemy to squash it. But I'm telling you here, greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. And the people, Peter and John, were filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, and whom God will give to all that obey him. He does not have favorites when he distributes his gifts. God is not like that. I, I, one of the funniest cards I ever got, and I mentioned this last week, was God loves all his children. And I opened up the inside of the, the card. It said, but you are always his favorite. And I laughed and it touched my heart. And then I thought, how sad. We're all his favorite. He doesn't have a favorite child. And he wants to give you the Holy Spirit. Now is the time to seek after the gifts that God wants to put into your life. 
We talked about that last week. We named them all off. Each one of us has something to be doing for God. But look what it says here. We are the witnesses. This is not the time to be silent about what you believe. And also the Holy Spirit of whom God has given to anyone that would obey him. The bubbling up inside of you, that is the Holy Spirit. And that's what is attractive to the world because right now the world is so sad. But I'm here to tell you, God is still on the throne. And as long as he is still on the throne, it's all gonna be all right. We pray, I loved what Debbie was saying this morning, I called, you answered. I called, you answered. We do not have a God that ignores us. In John chapter 14, Uh, Verses 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to remembrance the things that I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Peace. See, when you put God into the equation, peace comes in. Our lives are in his hands. And not one of you out there listening to me is going to die before your time. I had a dear friend that was in a terrible car accident. And I got the phone call and and somebody had told me that, you know, she passed away. Or that, or that her and her husband were in a car accident and he passed away. And she said it was the strangest thing because we were both in the same wreck. And we both had the same impact. And the Lord took him and he left me. She said, I guess it wasn't my time to go. See, ladies, bring it all to peace is what God wants to do in your life. He doesn't want you distraught and worried and churned up inside. He feeds the birds. He's going to take care of your toilet paper. Let it go. It's going to be okay. God will minister to you. God will, can drop food out of heaven for you. Bring it all to peace is what God does. And here they're saying we were the witnesses. And when they heard that, they were furious and sought to kill him. There's something about truth that makes people either want to embrace it or hate it. And you know, wise people listen to the truth. The word of God is the truth. And it says here that the truth of what Peter was saying was making them mad. And you know, sometimes that's what happens when you give the gospel. Some people get mad. We had the church parking lot, the car church is what we're calling it. And it was so much fun because like, you know, all our windows are up so no one can really be chit-chatting with each other but we can wave to one another. And um, Haley and David, oh my gosh, they sang so beautiful. And I was in my front yard listening to them. And the word of God was going all over Yucca Valley. And I think God was magnifying it. I don't think it was our special speakers that were so great, although they were great, but it was going far away. We even had someone from blocks away write Gerald and said, I heard the music. And it was all songs of peace and what God is gonna do. And it says here they were furious. And then you know what? We had someone else write us and say, doesn't anything stop you people? Nope. Nothing stops us. Because we know the truth. And so it says here in verse 34, the council stood up and the Pharisees, and there was one named Gamaliel, and he was a teacher of the law. He knew the Torah really well, and he was really well respected. People like a wise person, someone that knows what they're talking about. And this guy has a good reputation. Have you ever met somebody in your life that just has a good reputation? You hear about them? And then you hear somebody else talks about them and then somebody else mentions them and all of a sudden, you know, you've kind of formed your opinion on that person because someone's been speaking good about them. And then you're excited to meet them. That's also what our words can do to being negative. 
Oh, hey, Jimmy, them. You know, oh, boy, I, I, just, yeah, yeah, I don't like them at all. And our words have weight, and our words are important. And it says here, this guy had respect. Probably didn't speak out of turn a lot. Probably didn't try to boast and act like he knew everything, but he did know a lot. And it says here, in the council of the Pharisees, this man, Gamaliel, stood up. That word in the Hebrew, it actually means God's reward. How wonderful to be God's reward to people that love Jesus. To encourage them. To stop something. I don't know if he knew for sure that he was going to stop it, but he had some good advice to give. Have you ever received really good advice? I think my whole life I have, but I can think of two that really stood out to me at a very dark time in my life. After my husband had passed away, I was confused. I didn't know what to do. Uh, stay put, continue with my job, marry Gerald. I just had this, this waving back and forth. And one person was talking to me and he said, Merrily, don't let perfect ruin good. And it cut to my heart. Don't let perfect, what we make up in our minds that our life is going to be, ruin what God's doing right now in your life. Don't let that perfect ruin all the good God is doing because of your preconceived idea. And another one that I can remember that struck my heart, cut me inside, was when Gerald, cute Gerald, love you, when Gerald proposed I was scared and we had some friends come down from Washington and they knew me and I've been friends with them for gosh I don't even know how many years that back then it was 25 30 years I don't know and they knew me really well and they knew my first husband and they met Gerald and we all got together in one of the bedrooms and we just shut the door and there was the three of us just alone with each other talking to each other his wife and him, or his wife and her husband and my friends and me. And he looked up at me and he says, Merrily, I have something to say to you. And it's just two words. And he's never talked to me like that before. He wasn't somebody that was as known forever to be giving great advice or just, to, you know, giving his opinion. He was kind of, a, kind of a quiet guy, but he goes, I have two words from you. And I believe they're from God. And I'm like, and well, I need to listen. He said, I kid you not, Yucca Valley. Then I started laughing. I was expecting something really deep. But it spoke to my heart because those were the questions I was having. Gamma meal is going to take onto him boldness, power, courage to stand up. And he's going to address them and he's going to say, I have something to say. I have some good advice. And it won't make sense to anyone else maybe. But God will cut through all of it into your heart when I speak these words. I love that he did that. And so let's read on and see what this man had to say. This teacher of the Torah, this deep person that has some advice to say, and he said um, he was respected by all the people in verse 34 and commanded them with the apostles um, to, step, to put them out for a while. He says, can you just take the apostles and, and put them outside for a little bit? Can we just talk person to person? And so they came and they got Peter and, you know, or Peter and John and whoever else was with them and took them outside. And they met and like, just like had that experience with me just talking. And that's what he's going to do. And he's going to look at them and try to reason with them. And this is what he says. Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you're intending to do regarding these men. Consider and be careful about what you're trying to do. Do you know, if we would take those words, consider and be careful, before we make a huge decisions, a lot of us wouldn't make mistakes. I wouldn't make mistakes. Be careful and consider what you're about to do. 
So that's what he says to first, the first thing to him. And he says, verse 36, he goes, I want you to remember, some time ago, Theodos rose up claiming to be somebody. Oh, those people that claim to be somebody. This guy was a chief rebel with the Jewish people. He was coming against the government. He died 46 AD. And we're going to be reading here what it says. It says a number of men, about 400 joined him. And he was slain and everyone that had joined with him were scattered and it all came to nothing. He starts reasoning to them about the past. And you know what? Sometimes it's good to take inventory into your life and look at the past. Has God been faithful eight years ago to you? Has God been faithful 15 years ago to you? Look at the past and let God be able to minister through that to you. Gamaliel is pleading with them. He's talking with them. He goes, look at the past of what has happened. Calm down. God will take care of it. And so he starts massaging their hard critical, bitter hearts. He said, now look it. Let's reason together. I love that in Isaiah chapter one, verse 18. And it says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins are red like scarlet, the Bible says they'll be white as snow. Let's reason together. And that's what Gamma Meal's telling these people. Let's reason together. Wasn't there somebody else that thought he was somebody? And he raised up and he drew 400 men with him. He was going to be the great, you know, next best thing. I'm sure Sapphira and Ananias would have been there because it would have been the next best thing. Runs over and he says here to him, Remember this guy, 400 people rose up and went with him. But it wasn't of God. And he said, and look it, they scattered and they became to nothing. It says here, they joined him. And I want you to look at that word, joined him. Because they had a choice and they thought, we'll go over this way and join this man. And this man, he talks about another person, Judas of Galilee rose up many days after the sentence and drew away many people. One, he calls it joining in with them. And the other verse, he calls it drawing away. Joining in with a movement that wasn't of God, drawing away to someone else that wasn't a movement of God. And many followed both of these people. And so Gamaliel is here telling them, Reason amongst yourselves. You're becoming so upset with Peter and John that you're forgetting. If it's, if it's going to be something, it could be just for a little while and then it fizzles. And so I love that, what the Bible talks about. He starts reasoning with them. Verse 38. He says, but I say to you, keep away from these men and leave them alone. Now, that's not common advice that usually somebody gives to someone else. Usually, if something's happening bad or wrong, we advise them, correct it, correct it quickly. Don't let that happen, you know. But that's not what Gamaliel's saying to them. He's saying to them, keep away from these men and leave them alone. For if this plan is the work of men, it's going to fizzle out and come to nothing. Everything they're doing will come to nothing. You're worried about many things. He goes, haven't you seen it before? They raise up, they call themselves somebody, people go, they die. Another one raises up, grabs a bunch of over, when they die, nothing comes of it. He said, so calm down. And here he's speaking words that are actually cutting right into the heart. That we would be women of God in these troubled days that we could speak words that cut right into the hearts of people for the good, to calm down an argument, to pour water upon that heart that is so drenched, that we could be those women of God that pour good and give good advice. And I love it, it says here, but if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. 
least even be found by you, you will be fighting against God. If it's something God is doing, he said, you know what? You're not going to overthrow it. If it's just of men, he said, you know what? Let it happen. But if it's of God, don't try to quench out something that someone's doing. He said, because then you're going to be fighting God. And he spoke wisdom. I love that we're supposed to speak wisdom. Gamma Bill, it says here he was being used of God. He wasn't afraid and he speaks to them. Don't trouble yourself about it. Leave it to God. And whoever that's for this morning, don't trouble yourself. Put it right in God's hands. He spoke and the atmosphere of the room changed. That's what being filled with the Holy Spirit does. That's what having wisdom from God does. It changes the atmosphere of where you're at. You know, your invisible enemy has been with you way longer than just a few months ago. We know that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we war against things that are in the spirit. But take good cheer. Be of good cheer. He's overcome the world. And he's not going to let anything happen to you. He'll raise up a gamma meal in the midst that will protect you. He will raise up and use someone else's mouth to see you through. He will, sit, he will provide for your need. They agreed with him. They agreed with him. These bitter, cranky, old, crusty men with their fancy robes and their pharisaic attitude agreed with him. Bye bye, who knew? They agreed. And it says here, they called in the apostles, and of course they had to beat them again. Gosh. They beat them again and commanded that they should speak no one in the name of Jesus, and then they let them go. Yeah, like that's going to happen. Now we told you to be quiet. Now get out of here. And don't mention Jesus. Well, you know what? You can't stop people that are filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't stop women that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because you will continue to show up and you will continue to be cheerful. And it says here, they depart, de departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing, and they counted themselves worthy to have even suffered. Are we counting ourselves worthy to be suffering now? You know, this virus has come as a test because it's hard to be cheerful. How many times do you find yourself wandering around your house going, I can't believe this is happening? You know, for an extrovert like myself, I can only center so much and then I got to get out. It drives me crazy. Be still, God's saying. Be still. Let me work a perfect worth in you. I'm shutting down the world so people will look at me. It says here, they all rejoiced and they went out and they counted themselves happy, rejoicing because they suffered. Suffering, what it really brings about is complaining, doubt, fear, anger, and discontentment. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, now I speak to you regarding need. For whatever, I, for whatever state I am in, I need to be content. I know how to have a lot, and I know how, I, I know how to be a base, to have nothing, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned, both to be full, and I've been hungry, both to abound and to suffer need, but I can do all things who Christ, who strengthens me. Stay calm and carry on. The strength that God is doing through the testing is making us cheerful even in the distress. He doesn't want us to become grumbling and complaining. And that's what we can tend to do. 
But it says here, learn to be content with what you got. Learn to just go ahead and say, okay, well, if I can't go outside, then I can't go outside. If I can't have church, well, we'll just have it in the parking lot and pray in our cars. That we're content, but that we learn that we're so much in love with the Lord when we have a lot or when we have nothing. To find ourselves in solitude with the Lord is a great gift. God uses trials and tests to make you more like him. Let's go back over here in Acts. They did not cease teaching and preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 6, verse 1, we're just going to cover a couple of verses. And it says, Now in those days, the number of the disciples were multiplying, and there arose a complaint. In the growth, there will be complaining. You know, even within ourselves. Do you know? I mean, when, when we've, we've accomplished something really great and, and we're using muscles we've never used before, you know, we're excited and we're jubilant, but then the next day there's the complaint because the shoulder hurts because you used a muscle you shouldn't have used. In the growth, there can be a complaint. And that's what's happening here in the church. The church is multiplying. And I gotta tell you something. God is not limited to going to a building to reach people. And he's reaching people in the media, but last night, Gerald and I were just home, and we get a text from a gal in our church, and she said, I brought lots of people in a car, or they followed her in, we weren't quite sure, but she said, they all came to car church. There was a car full of people that didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ, or were seeking to find the Lord Jesus Christ. And she said, they have some questions. Would it be all right if we ask, they can ask some questions? Gerald having time said, sure. Have them call me. And there we sat in, last night and Gerald's explaining the gospel to people that had questions. Because they wouldn't maybe come to church. But they came and sat in a car. Now there was complaining going on. Multiplying arose and a complaint came against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribu distribution. You know, when growth happens, it's wonderful and it's complicated all at the same time. There's a growing, you know, there's growing pains that we have to go through. Even in our churches, there's just different things that we have to go through when the growth is happening. Well, that's what they're facing here. And the Hellenistics, they were Jews also, but they were from Greece. They were the Greek Jews, the Grecians. And so here we see that this group of people coming in loving Jesus are there in Jerusalem with the Hebrews loving Jesus. And then all of a sudden, they start to notice something's not quite right. Well, they bring it to the apostles. They felt like their women were being neglected. That the, the sect of the Hellenists that came in, that were being led, they came in with Philip and Stephen and all of them. They came in and they noticed that when they were given the widow's food, they thought that their widows, the Hellenistic widows, weren't getting as much as the Hebrew women were getting they would load them that they felt and they had plenty of food or whatever they needed. But then when it was these people's widow's turn, they were skimpier with them. Now I don't know if that was happening or not, but the murmuring and the complaining happened. You know, when my son was a little boy, murmuring's weird. Have you ever been around a murmurer? It's, it's a strange thing because it's not even really voicing it loud, but it's... And you know, it's kind of funny because when he was a little boy, we would correct him for something and we had, we had stairs in our house in Idaho and his dad would pull him down, be talking to him, saying something to him and, and then he'd say, okay, you can go now. BJ walk up the stairs and we were standing here in the kitchen and our stair our staircase was open it was an open staircase so as he's going up you could hear it, the footsteps you could hear everything and as he's going up the staircase you go stupid never and he'd murmur all the way up to his bedroom 
And we'd listen to him. Then it kind of be, got to be funny because then we would just wait for the murmuring. Do you know? They're going to murmur. That's what's happening in the church. They're just like, well, you know, look at what they're doing in here. And so we see that growth can do this. And God's talking to him here in verse 2. And then the 12 summoned the multitude together and the disciples. They got together. Let's address the complaint. Let's not be murmuring in our tents or murmuring in the synagogue or murmuring wherever they're at. Let's get together and talk about it. Though your sins be a scarlet, they'll be white as snow. Come, let us reason together. Let's talk about it. Communication is the key in relationships, in a husband and wife, to sit down and talk with each other. And the 12 summoned the multitude and the disciples said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. They are reading the scriptures. Everything's being unfolded to them. God's teaching them in their minds, in their spirit. And they're going, we can't be bothered with this. The the Lord is alive. The Holy Spirit is alive. People are being healed and you're talking to us about distributing stuff. They were single focused. And we need to be women that are single focused on the Lord. But then life does happen. It's like us at our church. If you have a need, you're supposed to call this number and we will do whatever we can to help you if you're a shut-in or if you're a widow or if you're, you found, you know, the finances aren't making your ends meet with your food. We are here to help you. We still want to focus on the Lord. We still want to give our hearts to the word and to worship and prayer, but we're here to supply your needs if we possibly can. And so that's what was going on here. It's the perfect example We still want to, but we have people, we have people that have needs and we must meet those needs. And that's what the disciples are saying here. I wear a bracelet every day. And the Lord gave it to me, literally this saying when I was going through a very, very dark time in my life. And I wear it and it says, what lies before us and what lies behind us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Tiny matters compared to what is inside me. Everything that's gonna happen, that has happened, that's gonna happen, are tiny matters compared to what's inside my heart. And I wear it all the time just to remind me. And so it says here that they were saying, this is a tiny matter. We want to be out, and we're, but this is a tiny matter. What are we going to do? Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit. And I've talked to you that about before about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that when you accept the Lord as your Savior, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You couldn't have come to the the Lord without the Holy Spirit wooing you to Jesus' side, saying, listen to this sermon. Listen to this pastor. This makes sense. This feels so good to my heart to know I could be forgiven. That's the Holy Spirit. But then there's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's the water with the cup full that overflows and there's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And being filled with the Holy Spirit, this is what they said. They said, find from you seven men that are of good report that they can come alongside and watch over this business. You know, it happened again in Exodus. And just briefly here, Moses, morning, noon, and night is tending to the people's problems. It's so much to the fact that he is not even eating. And it says here in Exodus chapter 18, Moses said to his father-in-law, They come to me all the time and they come to ask of me all these things from morning until night. And when they have a difficulty, they come to me and I judge between one and the other and I make the statues of God and I tell them his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you're doing isn't good. Let others help you. I love that about Gerald. He can delegate and not become insecure. Do you know how hard that is? 
to be able to say, you take this stage, you lead that Bible study, you raise up and do that over there, you be in charge of CBI, you be, can, do you know how hard delegation can be? And it says here, Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you're doing is not good. Both these people that are with you will surely wear you out, for this is too much for you, and you're not able to do it by yourself. Now listen to my advice. Here's some other good advice. Be that lady that gives good advice. Here's some advice I give you as counsel. And God be with you. Stand before the people that you may bring these difficulties to the Lord. And you will teach them the statues and the law and show them the way in in which they must work. Moreover, select from you people able that fear God and men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such of them to be rulers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and rulers over 10. He goes, Moses, it's a lot. Delegate. They're wearing you out. See, sometimes in ministry, when you're involved and you're doing so many things, can wear you out. Get you to the point you don't forget why you're doing it. It can wear you out. And then God says, I think I'll shut down the world. So they'll just sit and talk to me. What can I do to make them talk to me? I'll send something that they can't control. He's still God. He's still on the throne. And sisters, your days are still numbered. Nothing's going to happen to you before your time. You'll live through the wreck. You'll look over and one will be gone and you'll be there. Because he's still on the throne. And he's still God. And look at the wisdom here. They said here, um, verse 7, we will give ourselves, um, that we may appoint them over business, we will continue to give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. And it pleased the whole multitude. We will continue. We will continue no matter what happens, grumbling, complaining, viruses, uh, disappointments, death. We will continue as we've continued before with a lasting faith that God is good and he is in control. We will continue on. This is a bump in the road, but we will continue on. We'll delegate, we'll get help, and we'll keep going. Don't you like that perseverance? The faith that lasts no matter what? And how many have we seen that wash out in their faith when troubles and trials come and they no longer walk with the Lord? It breaks our heart because they blame God for the trial when so many times that trial was meant to just get you to come closer. And I believe that that's what's happening in our world today. And it says here, the saying pleased the whole multitude. When something's being said from God, it will bring peace into the situation. Gamaliel stood up and he brought peace into the situation. And now the apostles are bringing peace into the situation even at the church. And listen what they said. It says, choose people, it says here, and this pleased their whole multitude and they chose Stephen a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Faith in the Holy Spirit. That's what God gives you. That's your reputation today. Faith in the Holy Spirit and Philip and Prochorus and Nanakor and Timion and Pesarius and Nicholas and they were a proselyte also and they were from Antioch. And these they set before the apostles and they prayed and laid hands on them. They set Greeks over it. Most of these men that I just told you about were Greeks. They used wisdom. And it calmed everybody down. Because then it's going to all be even. And they put wisdom into the church. And God gives us these examples because we need wisdom in our churches even today. Online we need wisdom. To be out proclaiming the goodness of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it says, And now these things, these three things will remain. 
You ready? Faith, hope, and love. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. You're so good, Father. In the midst of a hard situation, you want us to be cheerful. You don't want us to complain. You want us to seek and to be, be at your feet, Lord, as you shut down the world. And Father, we know you're still in control and we pray, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just take this virus completely away from the world. That, Lord, we've heard you and we've come and we've sat. And Lord Jesus, you be glorified. We'll give you the honor and the glory. Put wisdom into the doctors. Protect the nurses, everyone in the health field. Protect them. And we'll give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, ladies.